As I attempt to perform my escape from Siler City, we enter into today's Roland Rambles. What is the subject of today's Roland Rambles? It's something that several people have asked me to cover, but I haven't covered it yet. And uh, in a way, it kind of hurts to do it. Because you, if you're watching this, you're probably no stranger to the fact that I'm a bit of a Linux evangelist. Um, I am not a major one. I don't think that it will be the year of the Linux desktop 20 years ago or anything like that, and everybody else is just a behind noob and all that. I think that Windows, in general, is a superior desktop operating system just due to the fact that it's so compatible with everything in the past, and because it uh, there's so much niche software, there's so many pieces of software in general that work with Linux and not, or not with Linux, but with Windows, <coughs> and not anything else. And you can't get it working on Linux even if you use Wine or whatever. Granted, there's been a lot of work towards getting it to where Linux can run Windows software, but we're still, for all the time that has passed, we can't even seem to get professional software like QuickBooks, uh, Adobe Photoshop or Premiere, anything like that to run on Linux under Wine. It, it's been decades. Like, Premiere has actually been, um, not Premiere, but like Photoshop has been a major blocker. QuickBooks has been a major blocker of Linux adoption for a very long time. But nobody cares to fix the ability for Wine to run QuickBooks on Linux. Nobody cares to do anything about it. If you want to run QuickBooks on Linux, you have to pay for QuickBooks Enterprise, which is very expensive, and I'm not sure that there is a client for it. I think it's only a server-side program. But I'm not a QuickBooks expert, so of course I wouldn't know that for sure. Compatibility is the major sticking point for Linux. The installed software base, um, the available software base for Windows is astonishing. Pretty much any professional application that is not a server-centric or server-only application is going to be made for Windows and or Mac OS first, with Linux a distant second. And if you run something like a BSD, uh, sorry, you, even software that runs on Linux tends to not support that very well. So. Software availability and compatibility, especially for professional packages, is a major problem with Linux. But that's only one facet of the problems that I have with the Linux system. Another one is uh, Linux is not. I don't know. I don't know how best to put this other than Linux's biggest strength, the absolute greatest, most wonderful thing about Linux is also its greatest weakness and the reason that the vast majority of people are not even going to attempt to switch to it. And that is choice. There exists a very well-known and documented problem with humanity called choice paralysis. It may go by other names, but the common name for it is choice paralysis. If I give you a choice between A or B, what do you choose? Well, it's pretty straightforward because you either have to choose between A or B. It's, it's a 50-50 decision. If you pick one, you know you're missing out on the other. But the bottom line with your choice is that you pick one and the other is just black and white. You know, if you compare this, that, even if it's just like dishes on a menu, there's not that much for you to compare. There's not sort of a fear of missing out, or FOMO, as the new term for that is. <clears throat> it's just not there. Because if you have to choose between the chicken, uh, the chicken or the steak, and you choose the chicken, it's like, well, that steak might have been good, but I had to choose one. And, you know, today I'm just kind of feeling chicken. But if you're given the choice between the chicken, the steak, the shrimp, the fish, the, the pork chops, you know, if you're given like six or seven choices, now one choice implies missing out or, um, you know, just, just missing out on six out of seven choices. 
And as a percentage, <clears throat> I'm not very good at this math, but let's use numbers that aren't seven. Let's say you have two choices. So if you miss out, you miss out on 50% or one. Uh, but if you have three, well, if you miss out, now you're missing out on 67%. Four, you're missing out on 75%. Eight, you're missing out on 87.5% of your possible choices. And this is the ultimate problem with giving people a lot of options. If they have to choose one, they will worry a lot. With 50-50, it's bad enough, you know, oh, I'm missing out at 50. But when you have to pick one out of seven options, there is an implicit higher weight um, to each of those choices. So if you make the wrong choice, you know, out of the seven or eight or 10 or whatever, then what happens? And what if you choose the one bad dish out of seven? So you're gonna wanna spend more time thinking about it. And a lot of times, because humans tend to process things by breaking them down into chunks and then operating on their pre-established heuristics they've learned over time. You know, um, if, if a stove element is red, it's more likely that it's hot than that it's been spray painted to be red or orange usually. You know, that's a heuristic. And you're gonna make decisions based on heuristics and chunking. Break the problem down into smaller pieces and then apply your established worldview and knowledge to that problem. But if someone walks up to you and says, hey, hey, instead of Windows, try Linux. Oh, okay, well, I'd love to try Linux. What should I try? Well, there's like a hundred different distributions. Okay. <clears throat> so which one is the right one? What, what, what about this one? What about the, this one is, is called Gen 2. Oh God, no! Oh no, not Gen 2. That's a source-based distribution. That'd be the worst choice. But, you know, for a newbie especially. No, God, not Gen 2. But how are they supposed to know that? How are they supposed to know which one of the hundred distributions? Are? And even if you break it down into the distribution parentage, in, into the descendants, or, or what do you call that, progenitors, um, the sources, if you will, Linux Mint is based on Debian. Uh, actually, it's based on Ubuntu, which is based on Debian. There are a lot of distributions based on Debian, but there's a lot of distributions out there based on Arch or even Slackware, uh, Fedora, or Red Hat. You know, there are a ton of distributions out there and they all have different parentage. They all have different sources um, that all expect things to be a certain way. And if you have worked with Linux for any amount of time to where you've needed a piece of software that couldn't just be compiled or is natively available in your package manager, you know that when a Linux package is distributed, traditionally, it came in these things, um, these packages that were specific to the type of distribution. So Debs for Debian, uh, RPMs for Red Hat. <coughs> I think Slackware just used tar gzip files. But they would come in these distro-specific packages, and... They would muck up all the nice management stuff that all the nice little package manager maintenance people have put together and made work very nicely. So if you stick to packages in the package management system, you'll be okay, but oh, but I need this one other thing. Well, now everything runs the risk of going out of whack. The dependencies on some piece of software some guy wrote and compiled for, your, for, for Debian well, does that work with, with Debian stable or testing or experimental or what? What? Which Debian does it work with? You know, and they can establish um, they can establish dependencies, but those dependencies may become outdated. Those dependencies may not work properly in the future. So it gets really ugly really quickly when you try to run traditionally packaged software. The solution for this is not much better, but it's what even a lot of Windows software started to do, which is to just shove every dependency into the software package 
so that the program has its own entire operating environment in which it operates. And there's no way there can be a dependency issue outside of maybe the kernel you're running because all of them are packed with it. Well, now every single program that's in an app image or a flat pack or a snap or, or a Docker instance or whatever, you know, any of these newer formats that jam all the dependencies together, <clears throat> now these packages, you run the risk of having outdated, you know, libraries and whatnot. And, and all the package management people at, at, you know, Debian or the Fedora project or any of it, have gone to all this trouble to make sure that you get the most up-to-date, secure, whatever, and then you get a friggin' app image or Snap or Flatpak or whatever, and it's got the dependencies shoved into it somewhere where they can't be updated because it depends on it. Oh, we wouldn't want to use a newer version, you know, that's that we wouldn't want to use one that's faster but also might get rid of bugs that we for some reason depend on because we work around them or whatever. So it becomes a nightmare pretty quick. Windows kind of worked around this using the side-by-side -side system. A program in its manifest can, can declare things uh, that it requires and Windows can cherry pick different com like compatibility versions or whatever of a library to link to a program based on what that program says it needs. Um, even that's not perfect, obviously. But the whole DLL hell thing is a very real problem on Linux, and, it, and it's even worse than on Windows, because the one thing Windows has going for it is the massive amount of backward compatibility work that they do in the system to make sure that even stuff from like 20 years ago generally, generally, will run on the most current version of Windows, generally. Yeah, it may not run perfectly. There may be bugs or glitches. It may not run. But a huge body of software is tested against every Windows to release to make sure that that Windows release did not break it. And this is important, especially with professional software. Because if you, up, if you do a Windows update and all of a sudden your professional software no longer works, which was the case for QuickBooks customers that had, I think... A significantly older version of QuickBooks, uh, 2011 or 12, or I, I don't know. But a Windows 10 feature update nuked the ability to run so many older versions of QuickBooks, partly because Intuit didn't follow the guidelines. But anyway, I'm getting a bit off track with this. The point is that overall, the compatibility stuff in Windows is, while messy, the solution's always going to be messy, and Windows just does it better than Linux. And all of the distributions, there's so many distributions that it makes compatibility testing a disaster. Because now you not only have to test against versions of one distro, but then you also have to test against other distros. I do not have the ability to install five flavors of Debian, Linux Mint, Arch Linux, Gentoo Linux, Slackware Linux, Fedora. I don't have the ability to install all this crap. You know, void. Um, there, there are a million of them. Uh, Pop OS. This is, I could list off Linux distributions for days, and if you go to Distro Watch, there's days worth of Linux distributions there. So, you can do that, uh, and, and there's no shortage. There's no way, no way for a software developer to test against all this stuff. So, that by itself is a horror show. But, I want to get to quite possibly the worst thing about Linux, the one thing that makes me angrier than anything else. <sighs> Here we go. It comes back to the choice thing. Linux doesn't even have desktop environments that work together properly. Linux doesn't have one desktop environment. Linux has a ton of options. There's the window manager you use, the login manager you use, the desktop environment if you even choose to use one. What file manager do you use? On Windows, the solution to all of this is simple. Windows has a built-in login manager, a built-in desktop window manager, and Windows Explorer 
for both launching files and managing files. File Explorer is, is Windows Explorer. And all of this stuff, generally speaking, every program ties back into this one single system. When you're writing software, and for example, let's say, let's say that you need to extend the functionality of the file manager. You need to be able to right click and do magic thing to file. Okay, so you need to add a right click handler to the file manager. Um, that's great, but what file manager? On Windows, it's probably File Explorer. Sorry, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. What's up with that? On Windows, it's File Explorer. On Linux, it's, well, you've got the one in KDE, the one in GNOME, the GNOME variant one in Cinnamon. <clears throat> you've got um, smaller file managers like Rocks Filer. Uh, there, there's, there's the XFCE one, Thunar. There are a ton of file managers, and while there are a lot of efforts to make it so that one enhancement for one manager works in the other managers, yeah, it's by no means perfect. The, the ability to choose between KDE, XFCE, GNOME, Mate, Cinnamon, Fluxbox, you know, uh, IceWM, if you feel spicy, you know, Rat Poison, I3, TWM, you, there's so many window managers, it's crazy. There's so many file managers, it's crazy. And hell, maybe somebody doesn't even do file management like normal, maybe somebody does file management using the command prompt. How do you enhance the command prompt? Well, I mean, the truth is you kind of don't enhance the command prompt. But with the single option, with one interface, one possibility, it makes it very easy for a programmer to be able to handle all of the possible issues with integrating into that manager. In Linux, you have all these choices. You don't know what the end user will use. So if you have one program, now it's not only that there might be different distributions with different versions of a, every given program at any given time, but now you also, within those distributions, have desktops to support, different ones. You can, what if they have FLWM? What if they, what if they, you don't know what they use. It's a support nightmare. Trying to help someone running Linux becomes this questionnaire. Well, what distro are you using? Okay, are you using Cinnamon? I don't know, I just picked the one that was at the top of the list. It's a disaster. It, it's an absolute friggin' disaster. There is a desperate need for consistency in user interfaces, and Linux as a system does not come with that consistency. There are all these different environments. They don't play nice with each other. They look different. They act different. Sometimes they cause each other's padding or themes or whatever to be wildly inaccurate. And then individual programs have a harder time adapting to the theming and the layouts and the engine, whatever. And it, it just, it's a complete mess. By far, the biggest problem I have with Linux is that you don't have consistency in anything other than maybe the command line. The command line's fairly consistent, but the desktop is a disaster. That's why I use Linux on servers and on my little programming laptop, but you will not generally find me using it on desktops. And what happens if I need to edit this video for you? Well, one of the crappy things I've experienced with Linux Mint in particular, but most distributions really, <clears throat> you have two choices. You get either the stable distributions like Mint, which run years out of date software. My software JDupes, is up to 1.27.3. I don't remember what version's in Mint right now, but it's the Debian stable version, which is like 1.19.2, which has several features missing, known bugs and issues that really need to be fixed. And 
none of them are in there because they won't update to a newer version because that's the way that the stable system works. So I have all these people running outdated versions of my software. I'm not going to support that. I'm going to be like, well, download the latest version of my software. Oh, it's not in my package manager repo. Well, oh, it's not in your package manager me repo? Well, screw you, dude. If it's not in your package manager repo, then they either need to get on the ball or you need to download my software from me. You know, I package up binaries for you. You can download it from me and it'll probably work. But that's too much because then, oh, where do I install this binary? You gave me just like a flat binary in a zip file. Where do I put the binary? What do I do with it? Oh my God. I'm not making a Debian package and an RPM package. You know, I'm not packaging for every version of Linux, especially since my program is one single binary. It's a single binary that depends on only the C library. Just shove it in your home folder, type tilde forward slash jdupes and be done with it. But no, no, they have to run years out of date versions of my stuff because that, you know, stability, stability. But then what do you do if you don't want that? What do you do if you want the later versions? the features, the fixes. Oh, well then you run something else, like say Void Linux. Void Linux, ah, oh, I put Void Linux on a thin client. Hey, it ran all right, man. Except, except, Void Linux is a rolling release. What version of Void Linux are you running? Ah, uh, Void Linux. Okay, what well, Void Linux, okay. Well, what, ver what, what, what you know then all of a sudden it's like well there's no there's no release there's no like milestone at which things are fixed a certain way and generally speaking they might have something newer but it, the baseline is x <clears throat> these rolling releases well now you've got all of the latest features and fixes and all of the latest bugs and problems too if they if they derive from the latest release version they might be okay if they if they're a rolling release that pulls straight from the git repository uh the software may not even work you know you have no idea but you can't get the latest stuff and and this is another issue with linux package managers having to use a fucking package manager for everything it's crazy like, I understand package managers do make it extremely simple and straightforward and streamlined if you stay within the package manager, if you can live within the package manager and the package list, you're good to go. <clears throat> but I want JDoops 1.27.3. Oh, that's not in the package manager. You're on your own, buddy. <clears throat> okay, uh, what do I do? Is it like on Windows where I can just download an installer and run it? No, 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 no. You can't do that, you see? That, that would require root privileges and it put files in all sorts of weird places and it doesn't play with the package manager, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, put them in like, what is it, user local, whatever, or, or opt, whatever. You know, that's what you should totally do. Okay, but I don't really know how to do that. I'm, a, I'm, I'm just a normie user. I'm not some kind of magical system administrator. Well, then why did you download Linux? Oh, uh, you just, uh, you know, it's, ah, uh, channel my inner Rick and Morty. You know, it really takes somebody with a with a high IQ to understand Linux. Oh, you, you got to have that high IQ. So any normie that looks at the shitstorm that is Linux today, and they see all these reports of problems, whatever, or if they even dip their toe in it and start getting flooded with this crap, you know, fixing one problem could take four hours because of all the interlocking systems that don't necessarily play nicely with each other, even in the so-called stable versions of things. It's, it's a bit of a freak show. There is a lot of value in standardizing on one approach. It does mean that you lock in all the disadvantages of that approach. It also means that you lock in the advantages of not duplicating effort, you know, KDE and Qt and XFCE and all that crap. Just all these things that they reduplicate each other's effort. Rather than all these programmers working on four or five different toolkits, environments, and so on, <clears throat> I would much rather see all of these guys 
just work together on a single one and stop wasting effort. There is something to be said for the old proprietary software way because while you didn't have access to the source code, you know, th there were plenty of problems. You did at least get a consistent, tested working system most of the time. You could argue about the instability of Windows 95 and all that, and how Linux was superior. Maybe that's true. But could Linux run the video game I want to play? Or, you know, Microsoft Office, which my business is required to have? There was always a problem. What shocks me is that most people who use Linux don't care to solve these problems. And the reason is, Linux, the greatest strength outside of you know, choice, is that it's run by passionate people. It's not one thing. It's a pile of different projects run by a bunch of different people that like what they do or that are scratching their own itches. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of passion behind it, which gives you the motivation to keep going. I wouldn't have worked on JDoops as long as I have if I didn't have the motivation to make something better and faster and more powerful and more feature rich and so on because I have a lot of deduplication and that kind of stuff to do in my own line of work. Any benefit, any improvement to the program benefits me too. But when it comes down to it, you cannot get with open source projects in general some of the value that you get out of proprietary projects. And some of that value is you're paying programmers and managers <clears throat> to go through the software and do the hard parts. Because the truth of the matter is, testing sucks. Documentation sucks. It's not really that fun to write documentation. It's not really that fun to do testing, to do QA, to set up test frameworks. That stuff is boring. And I'm sure there are a few people out there that do it as their job and love it for some reason. But my God, testing is so boring. I would much rather be working on improving the program than testing and documenting every last corner of it. And that's the problem. You're not paying somebody. You're not giving somebody financial compensation to get through the misery of having to test and deal with this garbage. Oh no, 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 no. See, you can't pay someone to document their free project that they do in their spare time for fun or for personal satisfaction. You know, documentation and testing, well, who cares? Hey, it works on my machine. It works on my machine. <sighs> and I'm not some sort of innocent here. I'm guilty of it myself. I've been working on my library, Lib Jody Code, for a long time, and uh, I've been doing major, probably for about half a year now, I've been rewriting JDoops and Lib Jody Code to make big improvements. I'm, I'm gutting JDoops, and a lot of the code that does things in JDoops is actually being moved to the library in a less um, JDoops-specific way, so that the software that I write otherwise can also potentially take advantage of it. For example, right now I'm working on a link files function that accepts a batch of files instead of the traditional way of doing function calls, like, oh, I want to link this file to that file. Well, there's a function call that does that. <clears throat> I'm setting up a function call that accepts a whole batch of files as the thing that gets passed to it. And the function goes through the whole batch, storing status codes for every single file. Instead of calling the function a hundred times, you can call the function with a batch of files attached, and the function can run through every single one for you, instead of you having to run through them manually over and over in your program. Oh, you only got one file? Well, you pass a batch of one. What the hell is going on in front of me? Anyway, you pass a batch of one file and that's the end of it. <clears throat> but right now, 
I have this bug. I actually shut off the issue tracker on this other program I've been working on. It depends on libjodycode, and someone compiled that program and libjodycode, and they compiled the latest libjodycode in Git, not the latest version, mind you, that I actually officially released. No, they compiled the Git repo that's only tied to JDoops right now and really isn't even tied to that because I haven't finished some of the rewrite. And so it doesn't actually work with anything. And they're, they're building this. And they're like, oh, why, why doesn't uh, this program build it complete errors out during compilation? It errors out during compilation because you're building with the latest Git that I've torn to shreds. That's why. It's not... It has nothing to do with... <clears throat> like... In, man, I don't even know where I'm going with that. Just... I guess what I'm trying to say is that I don't care that my other program's broken while I'm in the middle of the rewrite of the library. I'm not going to support someone who can't do something as simple as, oh, it doesn't compile. Maybe I should, you know, build the latest actual tagged version release and not the broken Git repo that isn't working. You know, maybe, maybe I, and that's the thing is that it's not even a problem in that program, really. It's a problem with the library it's attached to having changed the API because I'm not done rewriting it. So, guy's compiling the latest, but he shouldn't be. Nobody should be using the friggin' git repo code for anything they plan to do any serious work with. Like, there's no guarantee that it's gonna work. So, yeah, and, and the funny thing about it is, I, I don't even remember if I have that in master or not, but... Okay, off track again. The whole point of that is that Linux is a disaster in terms of just keeping everything working because of all the things that depend on all the other things and they can all be done in different ways and all the choices that you have and all the environments that exist and all the APIs and all the frameworks and all the libraries. It, it amounts to this system where support is a nightmare because there's no consistency. Whether things function properly or not comes down to whether or not hundreds of different developers that are unpaid largely do it for fun and don't care so much about documentation and testing. Uh, whether those developers actually, you know, do what you want or what you need to have the software run well. Yeah, anyway. There are other problems with Linux, but these are just the big ones that make me think that whenever somebody runs around screaming, you shouldn't use Windows, you should use Linux. Have you used Linux long enough to real to just to realize how limited you really are? You know, what? You ever try to edit a video on Linux? Nah, dude, nah, screw that. Every video editor on Linux sucks. Except maybe DaVinci Resolve. So maybe I should say every open source video editor on Linux sucks. They all suck. Shot cut, open shot, olive. They all suck. I have no interest in using any of them. Because every single one that I've tried just runs like garbage. And maybe it's because it's using an old version. You know, maybe it's because the repos or the, the software packages are old. I have no idea. But I can tell you one thing. This video is getting edited in Adobe Premiere Pro on Windows. It's not getting edited on Linux. And it's not that I can't use Linux, and it's not that I don't know how to use Linux. It's not that I'm some sort of fucking amateur. I mean, I, I release software written for Linux first, Windows second, Mac OS third. I write shell scripts that do entire big tasks for me, like dropping a Windows image or drivers or run diagnostics or whatever. I am no spring chicken when it comes to managing a Linux system. And that's part of the reason that I know that Linux sucks. I love it. It's a wonderful system, but it also sucks. Every system sucks. Three Dead Trolls in a Baggie is a comedy group from Canada. They were really fun to listen to in the late 90s on mp3.com. 
because the first song I heard from them was a song called Every OS Sucks. And it covers all of them and the issues with them at the time, like how Mac OS, they charged you for the beta. But yeah, it, every OS sucks. Every OS has its trade-offs and problems and so on. And for all that supposed stability and, you know, lower overhead and streamline this, that, and the other, and whatever, you know, customizability you get on Linux, you sacrifice a lot of backward compatibility, you sacrifice software, access, there's just, there, there are major trade-offs that are unacceptable to a lot of people. Some guy sitting in an office just, you know, he just needs to run QuickBooks and Microsoft Word. He doesn't care. You know, he doesn't want to learn that in LibreOffice the damn page setup was moved from file page setup in Word to format and page style and the page tab. It's like, bury that son of a bitch. So yeah, that's, uh, that's today's rolling rambles on Linux sucks. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to, uh, I have to go and be the reason that driving sucks. God, driving sucks. Thanks for watching and listening and all that garbage. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, and hey, expect more fun stuff from me relatively soon. Working on that UI documentary. We'll see what decade it gets released. Take care. Yeah!